All right, hello everybody. We are live here at OMCI. We're going to kind of riff here for a couple of minutes and let people join in. So while we do that, I thought maybe I could introduce myself a little bit and my partner here, Madeline. So uh, my name is Mark. I am a Whippy resident. Um, I, I'm a music teacher here in Whippy. Uh, for those of you who know uh, the song spot in Brooklyn, uh, I teach some lessons up there as well as around the GTA. Uh, I was an active member in the music scene prior <laughs> to COVID, but as we know, there's not much going on going on there. Um, and I've been with OMCI, uh, I think it was my second year with the program. I started in 2019 as an artist, and then I was fortunate enough to take on a role uh, last summer as a um, regional development officer to help expand the program's reach to new territory. And I guess I'm very happy to be here today as the, the result of our fruitful work last summer, uh, working with the town of Whippy to bring the program uh, to Durham. And I'm joined with Madeline Russell, hopefully I'm saying you're last name properly. Uh, she's a part of the education team. And Madeline, if you want to say a couple words about your yes, experience guy or what you've been up to. Uh, good evening. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction, Mark. Uh, my name is Madeline. Um, I am uh, more of a songwriter than a performer. Uh, I'm currently attending Sharon's Honors Bachelor of Creative Writing and Publishing program because I love to write. Um, and I put that towards my music and um, it's been wonderful. I auditioned for OMC the same year as Mark, 2019, and I, I had uh, it, met him through that program, got to know him a bit more um, during our showcase tour, which we'll be talking about more tonight, uh, further on in this workshop. And yeah, it, it's been amazing. It's been such a great opportunity to meet so many uh, wonderfully talented artists and uh, to network that way and just develop your craft. So we're really excited to uh, bring this to Whitby um, and uh, just give what we can give to artists from all across the, pro the province and the country. Yeah, well said. So I think on that note, we can sort of begin here with our presentation. Um, it, it is geared for Whitby, but for anyone who's joining across the country, um, all the information we're talking about is equally relevant for any of those of you who are maybe looking to get involved or are looking to, are just interested in the ways um, OMCI can be a benefit to a community in your area. Um, all right. So uh, one more thing before we start is if you do have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to drop a comment in, uh, I guess, our Facebook stream or our YouTube stream, and we'll be ending off uh, this evening with a Q&A with any of those questions you may have. So feel free to drop us a comment. All right, so who is OMCI? So OMCI is a non-for-profit uh, art service organization. It is comprised of uh, creatives in the industry who are dedicated to the arts and dedicated to um, serving their communities culturally. We, we are a cooperative, so we believe in strength in numbers, benefiting, benefiting from each other's knowledge and experience and having the, the platform and the network to support each other in our career endeavors. Um, and we are largely volunteer led. Um, it's, there's a, a big team working behind the scenes in order for all the programming to work. So it's 
it's, it's not just, you know, those of us who are lucky to play music, there's a lot that goes on to make the music happen. So a little background um, about OMCI before we get into the meat, meat and potatoes of the presentation. <laughs> um, so OMCI incorporated in March of 2018. It's based in the Barrie and Simcoe County area. Uh, the company was founded by Tori Hathaway, who is a strong female champion of the music industry. Uh, she had, I believe as the story goes, she, she got a record contract when she was 14. And I think through that experience, she had kind of like a light bulb moment that kind of said, uh, wouldn't it be great if there was a community or a cooperative that we could you know, join together and benefit from our, our knowledge in the industry and pass forward things we've learned through experience and things like that. So we're very grateful for <laughs> all of her hard work in building what is now a very ever growing entity. Uh, so since 2018, the, um, like I said, the, the program has been growing. Uh, it has received accolades from the uh, municipalities we've been partnered with and has received recon recognition in the music industry, which we'll talk about shortly. Uh, and like I said, we're expanding quite rapidly. Uh, last year, since we were forced to go all online, we were able to expand nationally, so that was exciting. We had members from BC. Uh, and like we mentioned, the big thing or the sort of the big uh, purpose of this presentation is to let everyone with me know that we are coming this season. Yes, and uh, not to toot our own horns, uh, but we are also an award-winning organization. Uh, we have received the Provincial Culture Spotlight Award in October 2018 for Best Partnership in Ontario for the City of Barrie, uh, the Barrie BIA, and OMCI Partnership. Uh, we were also the May 2018 International Canadian Music Week Startup Launchpad finalist, uh, presenting as one of the top six music industry businesses to watch worldwide. We've also been nominated for three Women in Business Awards, the Mayor's Award for Innovation, Accelerate Innovation Award, and this year we've been nominated for four Mayor's Innovation Awards in Barrie. So I think we're doing pretty okay so far. Um, so as Mark had mentioned, we do a lot of uh, the program through our partner municipalities. So I just want to take this time to talk about the municipalities that we're already partnered with, including Barrie, Beausoleil First Nations, Collingwood, Midland, Penetanguishene, or in Orangeville, Tiny Tay, and Wasega Beach. And as Mark had mentioned before, we are also a cooperative, and some of you may not know what it means, so I wanted to take this time just to talk a little bit on what a cooperative business model is. Um, so think of it this way. Normal business models show profit, and that profit, profit typically goes to the people at the top of the corporate ladder. Your social purpose as a business could fall victim to the greed of capitalism because your main goal is to make money. The bottom 50% of the Canadian population have their hands on only 6% of the wealth. And on top of that, we're entering an, entering an era of socially valuable organizations built on shared ideals. Uh, an era where only 5% of people believe corporations do right by the customers they serve. And where 85% of employees' morale and motivation decline sharply after their first six months, then continue to deteriorate where only 10% of people have a lot of trust and confidence that businesses have behaved ethically. And that's a lot of statistics, but the statistics mean something. We needed to appeal to our members. So normal business model wasn't the right fit for OMCI. Like any not-for-profit, the money OMCI might inherit needs to go directly towards OMCI's members and member needs. Donations of any kind would go towards growing the organization so the organization can continue to support its members. So what then? We became a cooperative. There are seven principles that a co-op follows, all of which appeal to us and fit our desires and needs as a four member by member organization, organization. One, it's voluntary and open membership, open to all persons able to use their services and willing to accept the responsibilities of membership without gender, social, racial, political, or religious discrimination. Two, 
democratic control, members have equal voting rights, one member, one vote, and actively participates in setting policies and making decisions. This is, differs from corporations where shares outweigh one another. Three, member economic participation. Members contribute to equitably to and democratically control the capital of their organizations. Four, autonomy and independence. Cooperatives are autonomous self-help organizations controlled by their members. Five, education, training, and information. Cooperatives provide education and training for their members, elected representatives, managers, and employees. They can contribute, contribute effectively to the development of their co-ops. They inform the general public, particularly young people and opinion leaders, about the nature and benefits of cooperation. Six, cooperation among cooperatives. Cooperatives serve their members most effectively and strengthen the cooperative movement by working together through local, national, regional, and international structures. And finally, seven, concern for community. Cooperatives work for the sustainable development of their communities through policies approved by their members. On top of this, co-ops are member owned and organized in a democratic structure to meet member needs. As a member, your roles include patronize the co-op, agree with vision, mis vision, mission and values, attend the AGM, be informed and vote, elect the board of directors, getting involved in volunteering, being a cooperative is an important part of what makes OMCI, OMCI, as we adhere to the principles of cooperatives to ensure our members are as happy and fulfilled as they can be. Now that's a bit of, that's the, uh, a little bit more gritty section out of the way, although I will continue to be speaking about the board council and chair, uh, but I assure it'll be a lot less brief and a lot less wordy. <laughs> Um, while we have about over 90 members and counting, we have a select group of hardworking individuals volunteering behind the scenes, as Mark had mentioned prior, year round to run the organization. Firstly, OMCI is governed by a board of directors representing all three stakeholder groups. Our inaugural board was appointed at the time of incorporation are serving an initial two or three year term. Our model is a policy and governance board providing necessary oversight and setting long term policy and fiscal direction. Our board of directors includes our consumer representatives, Jason Kerr, Megan Gauthier, our creative representatives, Hayden George and Tori Hathaway, as well as our industry representatives, Sarah Melody from the Songwriters Association of Canada, RWG, and Rosemary O'Brien, the past president of Festivals and Events Ontario. Following the board of directors, we have our council of officers. The council of officers focuses on the value of OMCI brings to the community, defining standards, expectations, and performance outcomes according to the aspirations of the organization. They clarify uh, and setting outcomes and creating a de delivering programs to achieve success are the primary duties of the council of officers who meet formally six times per year. They're appointed by the board of directors. Council members serve a two year renewable term of office. They're the substance of our organizational capacity and provide quarterly reports to the board of directors. Council members with a uh, star are interim appointments until the next AGM or board meeting where they will be formally approved. Council members each chair an optional council subcommittee in their area of interest, expertise, or geographical location. If you have an interest in joining a committee, please reach out to the appropriate chairperson. And finally, the Council of Officers includes Communications Officer, Leadership Team, Susan Coring, Human Resources Officer and Leadership Team, Brendan Culver, Education Officer, Dylan Cheshire, Corporate Services Officer and Leadership Team, Cooper Allen, Artist Services Officer and Leadership Team, Hayden George, Special Events and Projects, Catherine Chabot, Health and Wellness Officer, Sarah Melody, and finally, the Food and Rescue Officer, Lillian Romero. And we'll be talking a bit more about our Food Rescue uh, program later on this evening as well, for those of you who are interested. We also have a team of discipline chairpersons, including Jacqueline Brunn, the discipline chair of voice, James Stevens, the discipline chair of production, and Lyric Duby, the Le discipline chair of guitar. And our final chair group includes the regional chairpersons, Mark Wiley of Durham Region, Braden Folks of the Ottawa Region, and Colin Sankey of the Vancouver Region. And that's all I have to talk about for now. <laughs> that gets a lot of the uh, technical stuff out of the way. Mm -hmm. So, our mandate is to assist independent artists to overcome barriers, build strong networks, and succeed in building a sustainable, self-directed artistic practice in the music industry. We, we, we believe it's really important for our artists to understand why it's important to retain control of their art and their intellectual property. Uh, by this point, there's been countless cases of artists and you know, their labels or their management that have gone sour because of this 
and in today's music industry landscape it's now been more possible than ever for our artists for an, for an artist to build their own fan base reach reach out, reach out to their own, their own audience have control so we think it's really important to educate um, our members how to how to be successful independent artists and have full control over all of their um, all their assets. So our man, our mandate is inclusive of all. We we don't discriminate if you have disabilities, if you know any gender, uh, the color of your skin, your orientation, your class, or creed. The the thing we care about and the thing we're focused on is your your passion for music and how we can you know help foster that and help you achieve those goals you have for your career in the music industry so as we were kind of mentioning obviously with the current landscape of things with covid um we've had to operate very much in the digital sphere so it was very exciting and cool last season. Uh, everything went online. So traditionally our live performances became live streams where we produced high quality um, live streams through social platforms like uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. Um, our trainings and workshops also went online utilizing platforms like Zoom and Google Meets. And this actually may have been kind of an advantage because we were able to get some really cool uh, presenters who may have not have normally been able to, uh, you know, share their information and their knowledge based on, you know, some of the geographical limitations. So that was really cool to see. All right, so as well because of COVID, our No More Starving Artist Food and Rescue Program, which I had mentioned before, has a sharp, has sharply increased due to COVID, um, where we invite artists and the live events community to drop in and pick up free food. Um, but more on that a bit later again. So now I'm going to be talking about the federal ridings. Each job um, that we offer is associated with a specific location in Canada and participates, uh, participants work to serve the location that is funding their job. Due to COVID-19, these positions are virtual, like Mark had mentioned, we utilized uh, Zoom and Google Meets, um, so you do not need to live close or within the constituency that you're supporting. We had people from Vancouver a uh, part of the program this year, which was amazing, because um, uh, Colin Sankey, he's such a talented bassist, and it was so awesome that we were able to take him on this year. Uh, while we await approval for this year's constituencies, uh, I will let you know what last year's constituencies included. Barry Springwater, Oro Medante, Barry Innisfil, Dufferin Caledon, Simcoe Gray, Simcoe North, York Simcoe, and last year we added Whitby. All right, and now this is like kind of like the don't bore us, get to the chorus moment. We get to talk about uh, the main programs that OMSI is, is known for, and that is the Emerging Artists Program. And the as we've been kind of been alluding to, our food rescue uh, program called No More Starving Artists. So the Emerging Artists Program is a paid summer position where um, artists get the opportunity to gain relevant work experience that's relevant to their career goals. So you can get a summer job where you get to play and learn about music instead of perhaps getting a summer job, stocking shelves or serving coffee, which is nothing wrong with that. But uh, if you're trying to be an artist, this is you know, the way to go. And it's so, so much more fun. <laughs> Totally. And uh, so the, the way the way it works is we provide uh, artists uh, performance opportunities. Uh, there's training involved, different um, music industry related topics like learning about SOCAN and Factor and, um, you know, DMDS radio, uh, the list goes on. 
there's a lot of business skill development. So building your website, building your EPK, uh, getting ready to launch, you know, your music for the first time, perhaps. And I know a lot of artists, it seemed like it was cool to see them go through all the steps throughout the summer and have a single launch or an EP launch. And networking is a big thing because as soon as you join the program, your music network expands tenfold. And I can speak from experience, like I had kind of mentioned earlier, I had gone through the artist program in 2019. And I can say confidently that that summer was probably the most hours I put on my instrument, maybe in any other summer. And I had done, you know, I had gone through post-secondary music programs in the summer. So for anyone who's looking to really develop and grow in their, in their craft, this program will put a lot of hours into your, your instrument and in your uh, more or less on stage performance skills. And on that note, one last thing I think I like to mention that I think is really important is this program fills a really uh, important gap or it kind of fills a void for anyone who's either entering sort of a post secondary music education program or they're in one or they've left one, there, there's kind of a there's gap where in those programs, you're in a classroom a lot and you're learning about music and you're getting better at music. It's, it's very theoretical and it's all good. And maybe you have some recitals or ensemble opportunities, but the performance aspect is kind of taking the backseat simply because there's not the, the, I don't know, the capacity or it's just not built to focus on those performance aspects. And maybe you even have the odd business class. Um, but what, where OMCI comes in is we take those artists who have, are in those situations and we give them tons of hours performing, like on a, in, a, in a new usual year, every weekend you're out performing um, in the community. You're, throughout the week, you're learning all about the music industry, you're getting skills and you're actually applying them. So if uh, you're not just like directly learning about how to build a website and launch an EBK and launch an, you know, a whole single release, you're going through the steps and throughout the summer, you're actually hands-on practically going through and achieving those things. So I really can't, I don't know, talk highly enough about how, how great this, uh, this program has been. So a couple of details, um, the, the, the program is made possible through uh, grant funding. So in part it's um, op operates through funding through Canada Summer Jobs Program, as well as through uh, local municipal partners and local community grants. The, the main um, things you have, the main things to be in order to qualify is you have to be of uh, 16 or age 30, 16 to 30 and you have to be a Canadian citizen, a permanent resident or have uh, refugee status. And then I just wanna kind of repeat this, you get paid to play music. <laughs> it's, it's a job where you get actually get paid to play music. Like I don't, I don't think if someone told me that if someone had told me that was a thing when I was like either coming out of high school or in a music program, that there was actually a job you could just kind of apply for and they would pay you to go out and play music. I, one probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have believed you, but now that I've been through it, I can, I can say it's true. You don't have to, uh, you know, do one of those sort of average student summer jobs. You can get something that's, actually for music and it it's great <laughs> yeah and this is a steady job no less not just um uh booking a gig it's uh you're getting you're doing part-time or full-time throughout the week so it's it's minimum wage but um it's a great opportunity for musicians to earn a stable income during the summer so absolutely um so this is my area of expertise as a one of the co-education um, program coordinators. 
The workshops and training is run throughout the summer as well as throughout the year as part of our professional development program and are open to all employees with an interest for them. However, uh, during the summer program, it is mandatory for the employees to attend most of those trainings. Most trainings are accessible to gen general members as well, but depending on the level of training may require a small fee to attend. And some trainings are open to the public as well. Um, some of you may have seen, we've done uh, a, at the beginning of the year, a songwriter inside a writer's round um, training, or sorry, during the summer, I should say, we've done um, an MTAV workshop, which occurred before Kelsey Main performed live. Uh, we've had, um, Amy Walter in for uh, Tom Jackson. Um, it's been amazing. Um, across the board, it may seem uh, that many artists struggle with where they fit in the music industry. Almost everyone believes that they are ready for a record deal. Overall, it seems that there is a lack of understanding of what skills are required for or artists to succeed on any scale bigger than around their hometowns, business skills, marketing, social media, fan base and sales, and HR. And we at OMCI strive to teach our members and employees these skills and give them crucial information about the industry to help their careers thrive. I will say this, uh, Mark had mentioned before that we teach business skills and some of you may think, oh, I'm not necessarily interested in business skills, but these skills are really essential if you actually want to uh, make it in the music industry as an independent artist um, and to be able to understand uh, the deals you may come across or the uh, deal memos, contracts, any of those kind of things knowing and being able to run yourself as a business um, is, is super crucial and important. Normally the program ends with a showcase tour, a professionally developed concert tour highlighting our artists and the performance skills they have learned, um, which is the most exciting thing. I will be sure to talk more from personal experience later and I'm sure Mark will as well. Um, and the tour travels to our partnering municipalities, which I had mentioned before. Our first year incorporated the tour. Uh, the tour was only a single concert in Barrie, uh, but our second year of the program, which we had both started in, featured a tour of Barrie, Pentang Machine, and Wasega Beach. And it was just a phenomenal experience. There's nothing like it. Yeah, this is definitely the way to kind of end the summer on a high note. Uh, this point happens like it was like the late later on in August and we'd all been kind of <laughs> playing together on, you know, on their community engaged performances. And it was just a great experience overall. Maybe I'm just extra reminiscent about it because I haven't played with <laughs> anyone. We in, haven't in, gotten to see our little family in so long. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, a, it's just a great opportunity. Hopefully, I, I mean, fingers crossed we can do it again this year, but it's it's a great opportunity for all the artists to get together, play music together, highlight all of our skills, and just to give back to the community and provide you know a, a professionally developed concert tour in in the community. Absolutely, and it's also an opportunity for us to show some of the skills that we've learned over the summer and put them into practice. Um, particularly for those who aren't familiar with Tom Jackson. Sorry, Tom Jackson, he is a um, live uh, music producer. Um, so uh, if you see artists doing wicked cool moves on a stage or the way their stage or how their stage presence is displayed, um, it's usually done through stage production. And um, sometimes not all artists have the uh, natural intuition on a stage of where they know it to go. Uh, what to do to make everything seem bigger and bolder. But stage production really comes into that. We do have trainings to help artists hone that. Um, our show to case tour overall is as successful as it is in part thanks to our sponsor, MTAV. And it's also so successful because of the participation of our artists as well as the guidance we are given, as I just said. Uh, with the exception of MTAV, the showcase tour is run by its members in both the onstage performances and the offstage production. Uh, even the video taken of the tour was filmed by our content creation team. Yeah, and speaking of uh, good stage moves, there's, there's I think, a, a good one of Madeline in this uh, promo clip we got. <laughs> got a good hair, hair flip going or something. <laughs> So there's no audio, so don't worry if, um, here, there, there she is, there we go. Oh yeah, <laughs> and now I'm to there as well. <laughs> See, look at Mark go, she takes those bend knees, you know, showing yourself off to the audience a little bit. 
What people yeah, don't realize is that um, performing isn't just about playing music. It's being a whole person and persona. Even if it's not you, if you're a little bit more timid and awkward on stage, it doesn't always show well. So it, you really need to whip out all the moves. Yeah, and it's just, uh, uh, again, this is so much fun. I think, was it, I guess in this clip we have right here, like, <laughs> when you ever get to play with like a 20 person band, right? It's mm -hmm. just it's over the top. It's something that maybe you have to, you'd have to normally work years and years to get this sort of uh, scale of a, a gig on your belt. And then, you know, you can, you can achieve it after just like one summer of performing basically. Mm -hmm. This is no high school talent show. This is the real deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, like we've been kind of alluding to, normally the program operates in public spaces. Uh, if it was if it were a normal year, you would see musicians um, in places like the downtown area, in parks, um, by the waterfront. I know as a Whippy resident, I would love to walk down by the lake and pass through a bunch of performers, or be in downtown and just hearing the sound of music echoing. <laughs> on the streets. Uh, so yeah, we, we have our fingers crossed that um, with the way COVID is rolling, we are able to somehow roll out a hybrid model, but I think I'm perhaps being optimistic. Uh, we have to wait and see um, how the government protocols and restrictions pan out. Um, but as we mentioned, if, if not, we are fully capable of delivering all our offerings online. Overall, the program is not only an init initiative for our musicians, but also a community initiative. Uh, our municipal partners have enlisted us each year as an opportunity to liven up the community. Uh, we participated in holiday events, food festivals, farmers markets, and more. Um, basically any place you can imagine uh, a big crowd of people, we've probably been there performing. I know uh, one of our big things the year that Mark and I had uh, become a part of the program was Kempin Fest. And that was such a wonderful opportunity. Um, we basically had um, an artist station somewhere on the festival grounds for an hour um, each of the festival days and just performed um, even though there were live performances going on elsewhere, they were just performing in some of the slower places around um, a lot of the booths. And it was just a great way to engage with the community and brighten up and, and engage the uh, festival goers a little bit more. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I remember that one. So we do have a, another video that kind of highlights, I think this is kind of our candidate promo uh, each year. Canada Day is kind of the big holiday event in the summer. So there's a lot of programming that goes in around mm -hmm. um, the Canada Day uh, celebrations. saying to yourself that is such a bop where do I find that fun fact that is also uh it was written by um and performed and produced I believe by our a um um discipline um 
coordinator, uh, James Stevens, he's the produ production coordinator. Uh, he goes by Fourth Born Music. You can follow him on Instagram, check it out on Spotify. That is his song, Last Cigarette, because I know you all loved it as much as we did. It is such a bop. <laughs> Yeah, everything you saw in that video was all produced by our members from the, you know, photography and videography team in uh, content creation. So like Madeline mentioned, uh, shout out to James Stevens, who did the, <laughs> the song. And obviously, these are all um, clips from uh, events participated in throughout that Canada Day celebration. Oh, well, and again. <laughs> okay. So, Madeline, you, you want to take over for uh, auditions? Yes, absolutely. Now, for those of you who are interested in joining the summer program, you may be wondering when the program runs, runs and what the audition process is like. Auditions for the program are free and will begin in February of this year. If you look in the poster, I believe the date is February 15th. Um, musicians friends, keep your eyes peeled for postings with more information. I'd recommend following OMCI on social media for updates as they're posted and be sure to check the website. Check the website often because as soon as they come up, you should get revving. Uh, we yeah. will also be providing a series of workshops in the coming weeks with more detailed information on the audition process, how to apply and what we, you will need to prepare. Yeah, so I'll be back in a, a couple of weeks talking about the audition prep um on thursday february 4th so if you feel like this is all intriguing so far and you want to learn more uh tune in then and we'll be going deeper into the audition process but, but for now i can kind of give you the the basic outline of how the process works so this year what, what it'll be like is it'll be an online application similar to any kind of um, job application you've submitted before. So you'll send in your resume, a cover letter, maybe your music portfolio, maybe your website, headshot, any kind of music related. Uh, the audition will be more like a uh, submission. So I, I believe it's, there's been talks about doing a, like a criteria that you'll uh, record yourself and you'll upload to uh some some sort of portal and then our panel will review all of the submissions and if you are successful then you'll be invited back to a virtual meeting where we'll host um like a, a live audition before a panel of judges which is comprised of um i think it's partially omci members and partially just members from the community or various people in the industry. Uh, and if you're successful there, oh, I guess I, that's in the same phase. In, in the callbacks, there is also a sort of a formal interview with um, your typical kind of uh, job questions. And if you've impressed everyone at this point, then you'll get an email or a callback uh, confirming the, uh, you know, if you're successful or not successful. And then from there, there's um, an onboard meeting where you'll attend to sign all the, you know, paperwork and all that kind of stuff. And you could say we're doing something right because 82% of the 2019 staff chose to reapply in 2020. So I guess we're, we're having a good time, everyone. <laughs> The job does have some specifications though. 50% 50 50 of your time on the clock is performing um obviously for the music but as i said before 50 percent is attending the trainings and workshops the performance necessities include animate uh, animating the downtown and waterfront areas outside of high traffic times such as festivals and events with live music free for residents and tourists alike so you can uh have a tip bucket out um community activations at events such as movie nights car clubs charitable events planned lunch activations and just about any program you programming you can dream up. There's summer camps, seniors, uh, senior socials, increased online presence of the community culture uh, with regular posts promoting your town and using your trash hashtag, attract hashtags. Um, and I say this because it is mandatory you post three times a day on social media as part of the job. Um, we recommend creating professional social media accounts, not just using a personal account. Um, so 
And I say this because some people go into the job thinking, yeah, I can do three posts a day, but not necessarily wanting to do it when it comes down to it. And that's a very crucial factor. In order to engage with your audience, you need to have a social media presence. If you don't think social media is part of your brand, it should be. And I will say that because we have a lot of people who, whose career focuses on marketing and social media advertising. And it is so important to have a social media presence in this day and age. Uh, and in 2019, OMCI Emerging Artists shared over 900 photos on Instagram with an engagement of 50% non-followers. So I'll just put that out there as uh, an example of how crucial social media is to this program. Now for one of the more exciting aspects of this presentation, again, along with the Emerging Artists uh, program, we have our No More Starving Artist program. Our program is both an initiative for our members, but also an environmental initiative. Um, a common image in the arts is the starving artist. People believe that there isn't enough um, much money coming in and that artists being musicians, actors, painters, they have to starve for their art in order to follow their passion. But through the help of the organizations such as Second Harvest, uh, which we joined in the fall of this past year, We've been able to rescue wasted food from groceries of the food distribution industry and provide it to our members for free. We are putting food on their tables. From Second Harvest alone, we've been able to rescue the equivalent of 6,803 meals or a value of $24,102. That's not including the food we also received from Costco and that they have been donating, donating to us since August of 2019. I remember the, the day that we started collecting from August was actually our Barry Showcase Tour and uh, one of our members who acts as acting uh, managing director showed up with a bunch of, I believe, uh, banana loaves that day to the concert and we were all like, whoa, we get to take the, all these banana loaves? It was amazing. Uh, this program has been incredibly successful as well as beneficial to our members during this last year as the entertainment industry took a significant hit due to the pandemic and our members have bills to pay, but because of the food we've been able to provide them, there's uh, a few less dollars that have to go towards groceries. Not only that, but we have also received a grant to purchase grocery gift cards, which members and the public can also receive to help them purchase groceries at this time. Our food, so food salvage program has become an essential part of the organization. It's something we're incredibly excited to bring with us to Whitby in our venture. And if you look, I believe, I'm having difficulty seeing, but the, I believe it's the third picture from the bottom there uh, in the blue sweater near like a, a large green trash can that's me volunteer and we had received a shipment of um, turkeys hash browns french fries it was massive it was like seven feet worth of hash browns uh, over a hundred turkeys easy it was amazing and it's so amazing that we're able to provide this for our community and I will say that whatever our members or and the public are unable to take, we do pass on to um, uh, shelters afterwards as well. So we are giving back and ensuring that that food does not go into the waste. So if you're interested in being a member in general, there are lots of opportunities for members of various categories to get involved and volunteer. Identified opportunities include communication support, we have telephone, email meetings, folding, stuffing, transportation, wardrobe team, we need people to create and repair OMCI wardrobes with lots of sparkles and glitter, um, we need people to steam or hand wash when necessary, uh, customer relations at events, we need info booth people, greeters, ushers, uh, backstage support helps with hair changes, costume quick changes, video camera operations, as well as even volunteering for the food rescue program. Uh, we also can always use back end support such as training, safety locations, office space, workshop speakers, local marketing and communication support, volunteers mileage or offsets, grant writing or MOU for unavoidable hard program costs by location and proportional share of additional OMCI expenses to, to deliver the project. On top of that, I will say as well that um, if you are hired on for the Summer Emerging Artist Program, you are allowed to, uh, you have to pay for your membership, of course, um, and it can come out of your um, paychecks, but you are allowed to have one uh, family member apply for the general membership as well, which is only $10 as compared to the professional membership. Um, and your parents can take this opportunity to volunteer as well as garner some of the benefits that you garner. Cool. And then, uh, the pro sorry, go ahead, Mark. Oh, oh you, you can go. 
Uh, the program, as you can see, has been well received by um, members as well as, again, parents of those who apply for the uh, apply for the program. Um, we have a couple of other receptions on our website from uh, Kelsey Main and Jesse LaBelle, who are also members. So if you're familiar with those two, they are a, a part of our organization because they recognize um, how important this is to the music industry. Yeah, I was going to add, I can speak from my own experience, having gone through what is known to be a fairly prestigious music college in the industry and coming out thinking, um, you know, oh, I went to so I went so and so I know my stuff and I, I learned so much in my first year um, in OMCI in the in their Irish program, things I didn't know about the business, um, just strategies in general to take. So there's there's always more to be learned and i, I don't think there's ever um a place where you, you know everything so i think this is all in all a great opportunity to just grow as an artist and as a musician yeah absolutely um uh so our one of our mottos is simplify the process amplify the results uh, gotta amplify ants um but it really does amplify the results. I find it, it's, it's a little bit uh, more um, complicated than a regular job interview would be, but it's well worth it. The audition process is a necessary part of um, getting the job. And then again, you just have a normal job interview at the end of that entire process. And you get a whole summer of learning and performing. Um, so really, when it comes down to it, it's just a simple process and it's almost a click away on our website. Um, and I, I want to take this time, Mark, you can go ahead and start first to talk about our own experiences with the organization um, and go into a little bit more detail about our experiences if you'd like. Sure. Uh, just seeing this, this motto, it, it, it reminds me of like a kind of like a, I don't know, like a Chinese proverb. That's like one stick. <laughs> And you kind of get a bundle of sticks and it doesn't doesn't break. So just working together, having more of a team and it's really become more like a family of just people who actually care about your art and your your success is really comforting in an industry that can be kind of cutthroat or kind of difficult to navigate and to have that kind of support um, is just really important, I think. Yeah, and um, family is a really great word to use because we get to know each other. It helps more in person, but uh, we really get to know each other on a personal as well as professional level. And some of, some people become really close through the program, and it's amazing to see those connections being made. Um, and I know for myself, I find that the arts community can be a little bit gate kept, um, and we're really about um, trying to break down those borders and. Uh, when you become a part of our organization, um, you're you're entering this wonderful community of people who will help you network, will help you um, make it in this crazy, um, complicated industry. And it doesn't have to be that complicated when you have this many supportive, um, knowledgeable people uh, backing you. Yeah, and I think one of the, the things I am most grateful for is I think really just like the network, like I think of some of the people who are in my almost like daily interactions with, um, th they're mostly people uh, in, in like the music scene that I've met through this program. And it's, it's led to some cool opportunities. So it's one of those things where you never really know who you're going to meet and how that um, relationship is going to, you know, carry on with you down, down the road. So that's, I think, one thing that I'm really happy about that. I don't think I, I think I had was interested in, you know, building up my network, but I definitely didn't know how it was going to pan out the way it did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and myself, again, uh, as well as you, I 
as a writer, I wanted, and a music um, fan, I wanted to get into songwriting and co-write with musicians and find my way, but I was uh, having difficulty, you know, meeting the right people, engaging with people, and then I became a part of this organization and met so many talented musicians um, and have gotten to make a lot of connections in terms of co-writing, and it's been wonderful. Uh, so I think we should open this uh, part of the evening up to Q&A. Is that okay with you, Mark? Yep, sounds good. Awesome. So Mark is just uh, perusing our Facebook Live right now to see if there are any questions. And I'm checking out YouTube. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. We do have one. Are all the summer jobs for musicians or are there other types of jobs available? And the answer is no. There are lots of jobs available that are outside of music. Um, we have... HR, IT, we have our content creation department, which we spoke about, and content creation does the videography, photography, graphic design. Um, we have Jen, who is in charge of our content creation department uh, for the off season currently, and she is producing this right <laughs> uh, live stream right now. She is the one who's doing all the work behind the scenes to make it look nice and to broadcast this out into the public. So a round of applause to Jen. Um, what else do we have? Uh, I saw another one that was, how old do I have to be to apply? And the, the age range, again, is from age 16 to age 30. And again, you have to be a Canadian citizen, uh, a permanent resident, or have to claim or be eligible for refugee status, I believe. Uh, I, I'm not sure about refugee status. I checked the guidelines on Canadian summer jobs for that. Um, but I will say, uh, if you, it's 16 when you're starting the job. Um, so if you're 15, but the day that you'd start the position, you are, you would be, did I say 15? I meant 15, sorry. If you're 16, the day that you would start the job, um, then that's fine. If you're 15 while applying, uh, that should be okay. Um, we cannot bend the age because Canada Summer Jobs is a federal funded program. Those are the rules they have. And if you're outside of the age range and you are, um, if you are not truthful about this, unfortunately, there will be some complications involved. We cannot exceed 30 or um, go below 16. But if you're not, the 16 yet and you won't be 16 for another year another couple of months beyond the start date that's okay you can always come back next year we are welcome to have you i don't believe we're going away anytime soon yeah and then uh the other thing i get married i didn't mention before is the program typically runs from uh i guess the end of may early june until the end of the summer in august and we do have a couple more questions rolling in so uh, Rowan asked, how many applications do we typically receive? And uh, I, I see uh, we, there, were, there actually was an answer to that because I, I, I didn't know. But last year, there were over a thousand applicants for the Summer Emerging Artists Program. So it's a whole it lot is, of applicants. It's, it's expanding, but the good news is we are creating m more roles. So there will be I guess there's an option or there's, there's a possibility if we are approved for more um, grant funding that we can create more um, more jobs, which is also an, a next question, which was how many artists will you be accepting this year? That is a great question. Um, I don't believe Canada Summer Jobs has uh, approved our application yet or we have not um, submitted the final application. So we are, aren't sure how many contracts we'll be having for this year. Last year, we were uh, approved for 75 uh, contracts though, and we have been growing each year. So I believe our first year, it was 24. That's the, how the story goes. They applied yeah. for they applied for like seven and they due to a typo, they accidentally applied for 24 and were approved. Um, the next year, we got up to 40 something, I think. Um, and uh, last this past year was 75. Now the contracts in total aren't just for the uh, artists themselves. They also apply to our other departments. Like I said, HR, IT, uh, content creation. Um, it's the total amount of contracts we get for the summer. And then we narrow it down based on how much we need. Um, 
if you are a content creator um, and we happen to go, uh, we we don't we aren't able to go hybrid program again. There may be a higher need for content creators because we need people to produce these live streams. Um, but if not, um, it might be a little bit less. It really depends. Um, but once we are approved, hopefully we'll be able to tell people. Uh, one of the next questions we have is, is the training paid or does the pay come for performances similar to busking? So no, you are being paid to attend these trainings. It's really awesome because um, you're, you're going and you're getting really, uh, well, if you're a part of the program, I should say, um, if you're just coming to the trainings for fun and because you want to learn, um, that is on your own time. Um, but it, they, it, they are very knowledgeable, so I do recommend coming to them. Uh, but if you are a part of the program, those trainings are a part of the job. You get to sit there and learn about the industry and get paid to learn about it. That's pretty awesome because I, I wouldn't compare it to school at all, but I know there are so many of us that are in college or have graduated college or are going to college. And my college program alone is like $8,000 so I can sit there and learn. And now that I'm uh, online, it hasn't decreased at all either. So I'm paying $8,000 for sometimes to not even have classes in person at all. So this is amazing. And, and the, the other uh, thing you mentioned with that, that Jasmine was asking was, um, you do get paid. Um, so if, if this was like a normal, uh, a normal year and you were out performing in the community, you'd be paid just to show up on an hourly rate and you could collect tips and over a summer, uh, there's a lot of money to be made, um, just from collecting tips. And I think this is part of also the, one of the un, unknown gems of OMCI is there's a uh, relationship between OMCI and SOCAN. So SOCAN is a performance uh, royalties organization. So every time you perform original works in the public, so in this case, we also have one for streaming as well as in the public, you can um, claim those royalties as a live performance and get paid up to $75 per performance for original works performed live. So and that's only when you're on the clock though with us, if you're just going to volunteer for us, cause we do have volunteers busking. We have our emerging musician program, which is similar. However, you're not being paid. It's just volunteer outperforming. Um, when you're on the clock, you can collect for SOCAN, but when you're not, you can't because you're not under our contract. Right, so you get paid a wage and you can get paid in tips and you can get paid in royalties. So. There's it's a, a lot whole of lot of money you can get. It's a really <laughs> fantastic opportunity. Um, you cannot force people to tip you if they're walking by. That is that is not okay. But you can have a little box out and you can say, you know, tip me if you want. You can have um, your, a social media being like, follow me here. Um, but you can't force them to tip you. I will say that. And I, I do believe we had kind of set up like virtual tip jars through PayPal or similar sort of things. Um, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't too involved in uh, all that last season, so I don't know how well um, that how that went. Madeline, did you have any kind of part of any of that kind of stuff? So we have we provide a, a sign for normal years when we're able to be out in the um, I guess normal subjective when we're able to be out in the public, um, and those signs have your name. Um, your Instagram, I believe, um, and have a, what are they, QR codes, those little square things that people right. can scan, and they can scan that and it takes you to their page where they can tip you. We also, I believe, we're able to, we're, or we're trying to set up those QR codes um, for our live streaming for this past year, because um, we're online and we're not getting to receive the same tips we would in person. So we had that option as well. So it's been, um, really great um, to be able to find different aspects. We're really trying to play around with different opportunities. Um, and it's just, it's, it's awesome what technology allows for. Um, I received a question. What skill level is usually higher? Should you have a portfolio? Is it better to have something more polished like that? Um, it can really depend because um, <sighs> everyone has different skill, skill levels and this is supposed to help prepare you for the industry. Now, if you 
are coming straight out of your high school band per se and um you have you don't really put much effort into practicing um then it'll show more in your auditions come dress professionally try and be prepared um give as much information as you can if you don't have as large of a portfolio that's okay but you, you will learn to develop it i know there's a word on the slide that some of you may not have knew um epk you'll learn about an epk in the program but try and have as much um to display about yourself as a musician as you can yeah it, um, it, it definitely it definitely ranges uh, i'll add on to that um sometimes it's it's people right out of high school um sometimes it's people who have finished post-secondary music programs um mm -hmm. I, I i remember when i auditioned sort of the one of the testing questions was they asked how if if you were to perform a live set how how many how many minutes could you fill and in the in the regular program those um performance spots in the community are three hour time slots so yes. the the goal is to i think work up at least you know up to three hours worth of repertoire or at least build a 45 minute to an hour um set list so you can perform it multiple times throughout the set throughout the, the shift so that might be a way to gauge if you think you're ready obviously i don't want to discourage anyone from applying i i think it's i think if, if, if there's something you're interested in definitely apply yeah go for it i got in and i'm not as talented a musician <laughs> as mark mark is a phenomenal musician and i am nowhere near that i can barely play the ukulele barely play the piano barely play the guitar but yeah maybe just keep that keep that in mind is you if if you can perform a 30 minute set then you're probably good to go. <laughs> um, and I will say as well that uh, for the callbacks, um, one of the things that they do, uh, it may change this year, but one of the things that they do do is um, uh, the first audition, you come with two songs of your choice. The second audition, one song has usually been your choice. And the second song comes from a list of options that the, that the organization provides 24 hours in advance. And that's to see how um, willing you are to try and to practice and um, are able to learn and adapt. Um, uh, I remember uh, I didn't know how to play any of the songs my first year when I when the list came and I was like, oh no, I, I don't, some of these I don't even know. So, and it, it really throws, it puts you on your uh, toes a little bit and you kind of have to figure it out. Um, we have a question here, will there be any virtual work ops if I don't live in your area? Um, that That is something we're figuring out uh, because we went from totally in person to totally online. I haven't had the opportunity to experience what it would be like to have people, if we're totally in person again, live in a separate area. And I'm sure we will because we do have the capability of being online, I'm sure we'll be able to have the opportunity of um, uh, doing these workshops uh, in person, but also live streaming them for those who are unable to make it. Um, so if you're not in the area, don't be discouraged. Go ahead and audition. The auditions are virtual this year. We have no idea where this is going currently. Yeah, and, and like there's an example of our member who is from BC. So uh, it doesn't matter if you're in Whitby or in Barrie or if since we're we're there's a possibility we're going virtual you don't have to geographically be in the constituency that the um funding comes from uh so to answer your question yes there might be plenty of opportunity to expand with these sort of virtual opportunities yes uh sorry i just remembered something that i had to say about the previous question about um uh what kind of experience you need. I will say, if you know people who are qualified to um, be in the HR department or the IT department or content creation department, encourage them to um, apply as well because uh, if for content creation, you might need videography or uh, Photoshop portfolios, any of those kind of opportunities. So the 
qualifications vary based on the department as well. Um, I got a, a question on my end, are there opportunity, opportunities to learn about producing? Absolutely. Uh, we had a couple of production um, workshops throughout the summer. We had a uh, uh, well-known producer, Dev Romano, come, or Dev Romano, sorry, come in twice throughout the summer last year and lead um, to uh, producing workshops, and that was wonderful. We also had him the previous year in person, um, and uh, it was very exciting. He came, uh, someone wrote lyrics well as he was producing, and it ended up being me our first year, and it kind of threw me off as well. We, I got to learn about top lining in that regard, um, and it was it's just such a cool, engaging uh, opportunity. So absolutely, and I'm sure we'll also get some other people in because we have people like James Stevens who also know how to produce. And again, live production, like I had mentioned before uh, about Tom Jackson and Amy Walker, Walter. Uh, are there any questions on your end, Mark? Um, looking through, uh, <laughs> there's one that do you teach musicians how to play? Uh, yes and no. <laughs> so this is complicated. If you aren't as proficient in your instrument so this far, um, we won't sit down and teach you how to play it, but, uh, but we can teach you how to improve your craft. Uh, we yeah. had a couple of workshops such as that um, this past summer. I led a workshop on some lyric writing um, and I taught people some of the, um, the what's the word? Oh my gosh, I'm an English major. I should know this. I learn it all the time. Um, literary techniques that can be used towards poetry and how your poetry can be transferred into music as well. Um, uh, my co-education coordinator, Dylan Cheshire, who is our education um, uh, program coordinator in the, uh, the, in the board, um, he, uh, he led a workshop on a bit more advanced guitar and a little bit of theory um, so people can improve upon what they already know. Um, we have people who lead uh, bass workshops um, to improve that, uh, people who uh, help people strengthen their vocals, um, people who teach people how to uh, arrange music. So there's lots of different opportunities in terms of workshops. Yeah, so it may not be like necessarily how to start, but it's definitely how to get better at performing uh, strategies to um, make your live performances uh, better. Like, I think it's great to have the sort of feedback from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from your uh, program coordinators on things you can do to improve. And like Madeline mentioned, there are uh, very specific uh, workshops available for like, again, tiered sort of advanced workshops that might be applicable to artists in the various uh, instrumental or voice roles, things like that. Yeah, and if you're, you're if you if you if you feel very confident in your main instrument and you're thinking of learning a new instrument, like say you play guitar and you want to learn bass, it's okay to start um, learning the uh, or attending the bass workshop to learn. Um, although it some of them can be a bit more advanced because uh, we assume that the people who are attending those workshops are people who that's what they're learning and that's what their main student is and they're going to be pro, but it, um, it's okay to attend them and want to learn more about that. Um, however, if your main instrument is what you're wanting to learn because you don't find you're very proficient at it, um, we aren't here to start beginner musicians. Yeah, so th there was a question from Matthew on what types of workshops are offered to the emerging artists. And I think as the uh, education coordinator, I, I know you've talked about uh, quite a lot of them. Is there, is there anything else to add on on that, on wh what kind of workshops people can expect? Oh, the summer went by in such a blur, I can't remember so many of them, but we kind of organized it um, week by week. So we had one week that focuses, focused on business, one week on marketing, went back to business, although not like that because we don't just want to bore you right off the bat. Um, we had a week on the songwriting, which included the production, the top lining recording. Um, uh, some of the categories that we follow are like mastering your craft, 
event and festival preparation, um, uh, business or entrepreneurship. Again, there, uh, there's so many things, uh, fundamentals and basics. Um, we also provide uh, content creation trainings, not only for the content creation department, but also for um, the, the artists themselves who maybe want to learn about how to make their own posters a little bit or edit their own videos and learn the basics of that. Um, and I know our content creation department, um, because we started learning the OBS system, so that way we could broadcast these live performances, they had to do a training on the OBS system. Um, uh, we had HR trainings um, on, you know, the restrictions we follow. We had IT trainings about our system. Um, we also had obviously the main government required um, four steps to work in health or safety because work and health uh, worker health and safety is incredibly important. So it, it definitely ranges to the necessities of our musicians. Uh, uni students finish school in April. Can they start earlier? Um, uh, I'm not the best person to, uh, to speak about this, but I believe Canada Summer Jobs has expanded um, their uh, time frame this year. It goes in terms of weeks and I can't remember how many weeks it is before. So usually people might be able to start uh, June and go until September for their contract, but I think they've expanded it and I don't know how long uh, people could go for um, based on what it was expanded. So if you want to know um, what it is this year. I definitely check the Canada Summer Jobs website. However, it also comes down to what our uh, artistic directors have selected, and I'm not sure what they've decided to go with thus far, um, but I'm sure we will discuss more about that later. Um, until then, if you are wanting to hope to get involved, I also recommend volunteering and using your some some of your time with that and um, get in with the organization uh, while you're trying to wait for the jobs to go through. Yeah, and um, as I guess there's already been a comment in, in the text, but typically the, the program does run um, sort of the, the end of May um, until the September range. So mm -hmm. that that is the usual, but like, I, I think they're like, like Madeline said, with uh, Canada Summer Jobs, I think there may be a way to like change the, the hours around to, um, like maybe even like a lower wage for more hours or allocating the hours in different ways. So there's, there might be a way, but again, I'm not sure if we're the ones to answer those kinds of details. Uh, I think Ruby also asked, uh, are there job jobs in production? And there's, I think we mentioned there's probably even more jobs <laughs> in production because uh, with the possibility of us being more virtual, there's a more there's more of a need for um, producers behind the scenes to um, create the this very like live session we're we're in um, mm -hmm. and and things like that. If you're talking about music production, however, that might be a little bit more complicated just because um, uh, you know artists write their songs. They if they want them to say go on to Spotify and go through distro, distro and be distributed, they'd have to find someone to produce it themselves. Um, we can definitely help people um, navigate, but uh, we aren't paying people to produce someone's song and to distribute it. Um, we are here to help provide uh, artists with opportunities and the knowledge of how to do it, um, if that makes sense. Um, if you are a producer though, I'm sure, um, you understand um, a lot of different aspects of music and I'm sure you'd make a great performer. Maybe uh, if, if you have a way to do it and we're back in person, you can also, let's say loop maybe, start looping your little jams and kind of like DJing on the street maybe. Um, that's performing as well. Uh, it could be really interesting. Um, and I know that there were times when artists performed together. Um, we had drummers and guitarists out sometimes. So perhaps um, you go out with a singer and you're creating the beats that they're singing along to. It could, it's a really great opportunity. And just because you aren't in a 
just because you're an, a music producer doesn't mean that we don't encourage you from applying. You should definitely apply because I'm sure that there's uh, a use for you somewhere. I don't yeah, think I, there's any more questions on my end. Do you have any more questions uh, over on their Facebook there, Mark? I, I, I do see one and it's uh, probably a complicated one. Uh, Roxanne asks, are there opportunities and jobs for international students studying here? Uh, my son is in music college. He writes songs, plays drums, and now learning keyboard. Uh, how do I contact you after this presentation? Uh, again, I, 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 I do believe one of the requirements was have to be a Canadian citizen. So I don't know if international students are going to be able to qualify, but you to get in touch with OMCI, you could send us an email that's available on our website. You could even potentially drop us uh, a message on our Facebook channel. Um, we'll receive messages there um, and we'll let you, let, let you know if there's anything we can do about that. Yeah, um, if you're saying that they're uh, studying abroad elsewhere, but they are a Canadian citizen, that may apply, but if they're a, a, a citizen of another country and they're studying in Canada, I don't believe that qualifies for the Canada Summer Jobs Program's um, qualifications. Um, but uh, yeah, I believe that's about it. Sorry. If you want to get in contact to us, though, after this, um, you are definitely welcome to contact us uh, at info at ontariomusicians.com. Um, that is our email. Uh, it is, I think, on our website as well. We do have some contact information. So definitely reach out. We'd love to talk with people. And if you're thinking about volunteering, like I had mentioned early in the presentation, we'd love to hear from you and hear what you're able to help out with our organization. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think with, with that, we're about ready to uh, conclude this evening. So. I'd like to thank everyone who has been joining us. Uh, I hope this has been informative and you've taken away something about OMCI and the program and the different ways maybe you can get involved. And we are certainly looking forward to seeing how things pan out this year in the season. Yeah, I, um, I really hope that if we're online, that I'll get to see some new faces on my screen maybe uh, this year. Um, I, last year I had helped with the audition process. I usually ran the waiting, the virtual waiting room. So if I do that again, hopefully I'll get to see some of you all there. Um, and if we're in person, we're renovating our office. Maybe I'll get to see you at the brand new office this summer. Um, and that's all I have to say. Thank you and good night so much for coming. Yeah, stay home, <laughs> stay safe, stay healthy so that we maybe can get out there this summer and do our thing. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>